But let me tell you about this function I went to the other night, way uptown. And baby, when I say way uptown, I mean way, 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 way uptown. Somewhere it's between 125th Street and Infinity. Inside was the largest gathering of black, Negro, colored Americans you'd ever want to see. Over in one corner, you got Nat Turner sipping champagne on an Eartha Kitt slipper. And over in another corner, Fred Williams and Malcolm X was discussing existentialism as it relates to the shuffle ball change. And Jeremiah and Angela Davis was in the kitchen sharing a plate of greens and going off about South Africa. And then Bat sat down and started to work them 88s. And then Stevie joined in. And then Miles and Duke and Ella and Jimmy and Charlie and Sly and Lightning and the Count and Louie. And then everybody joined in. I tell you, all the children was just up in there dancing to the rhythm of one beat, dancing to the rhythm of their own definition, celebrating in their cultural madness. And then the floor started to shake. And then the walls started to move. Before everybody knew what was happening, the entire room lifted up off the ground. The whole place just took off and went flying through space, defying logic and limitations, just a spinning and a spinning and a spinning until it disappeared inside my head. That's right, there's a party going on inside of here. That's why when I walk down the street, my hips just sashay all over the place because I'm dancing to the music of the madness in me. And whereas I used to jump into a rage anytime anybody tried to deny who I was, now all I got to do is give an attitude quicker than light and then go on about the business of being me because I'm dancing to the music of the madness in me. I think he's got a heart as, as, as big as one could imagine, and even though it's, it may be protected, the view of that heart may be protected from much of the world. I mean, it, George is making a theater that responds to the present crisis, and the best theater in history has always come out of that. So I, I, I've said it many, many times, I think that the winds of history are blowing through George Wolfe, and I think that he is the most important person in the American theater for that reason. And what he gives, which all the best directors give, and without it, a director will never survive in a rehearsal room, is concentration. He's mediating between a black world, which has been excluded from everything forever, and a white world uh, where he is suddenly, as he will say, I'm sure he said to you, He's in the mainstream, but he can't get a cab. You know, George has an agenda. George is a young black man, and he has a lot of things to say about the condition of black people. George doesn't have conversation like you and I would. You know how you sit down and have conversation and talk about He doesn't do that. When I went to see it in Los Angeles, I saw the things that George was saying to me and the things that were on the page. I saw it in action, and it moved me, and it shook me. And, and I thought to myself, wow, you know, this, this is what he was trying to say to me, you know, but I was too, you know, rigid. I was putting, simply because I had never seen anything like it before, and I had never been, you know, in line to do anything like that. It's so risky. Maybe it's because I've gone as far, I've gone as far in one direction as I want to go. I don't know what that means, because I'm, I'm in a strange place. Not strange, but it's not strange, bad, strange, interesting place right now, just as an artist. Because um, there's sort of, in some strange way, I, I, I wanted to be, I always wanted to be a successful artist, and I sort of turned into a cultural force, which is bizarre. And here all this time, I've been thinking, we gave up our drums. But no, we still got them. I know I got mine. They're here in my speech, my walk, my hair, my God, my style, my smile, and my eyes, and everything I need to get over in this world is inside of here, connecting me to everybody and everything that's ever been. So don't waste your time trying to label or define me, because I'm not what I was 10 years ago or 10 minutes ago. I'm all of that, and then some. And whereas I can't live inside of yesterday's pain, I can't live without it. My power is in my madness and my colored contradictions.